So it's not like I love everybody to hear me. I get really loud, so it's not a problem. Um, so Zach Lockhead is going to get this one correction. He's from Flint, Michigan. Going to school uh, at Michigan State, which is really expensive. And uh, after that, I've had the opportunity to work with, uh, with the youth in, in Flint and in Lansing. I mean, and Hamza, it wasn't anything uh, official. I mean, the masjid, they needed a youth coordinator without youth coordinator. But I, I mean, this is, you know, this is something I love to do. I love to play, inshallah. You know, uh, it translates into talk, inshallah. And um, I heard that you guys were tired. How does that? No. Who's tired? You guys okay? Everybody's fine. How about just in case we're tired? Why does everybody stand up? And stand up? <laughs> Just to, to break it down before we start, um, the first part of this talk, inshallah, is going to be uh, pretty theoretical, kind of like out there, like, you know, it's good information, but you can't really do much with it, that kind of stuff. And inshallah, the second part of the talk, we're going to turn it into something practical, inshallah. And there, you know, I think is, there's room for a lot of questions and a lot of discussion, inshallah. I hope that we can have a good discussion, because I haven't, I haven't prepared an hour's worth of talking, though I think the time slot's an hour, I prepared a lot less, so we can discuss, talk, and ask questions. And, so before we jump into the topic, I actually, frankly, I don't know why, you know, um, I'm giving this talk because MashaAllah, Sister uh, Fariha and Sharif, uh, I only knew them for email from now, I got to finally meet them now. They did an excellent job in writing up this topic. They wrote basically a paragraph, which I could literally just say the paragraph and we could be set, I think. Allah Alam, MashaAllah. So, I mean, MashaAllah, you guys, JazakAllah Khairan, this is, this is awesome. And you're saving me a lot of trouble because I'm really like this big paragraph is about. The paragraph is, this is the topic, it's called Story of Our Life, and the subtitle is Precious Beginnings of Worship. And the question answer is So, this is what they wrote. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just to read this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes when He first created us all and gathered us before Him to bear witness to His Lordship. Am I not your Lord? Who here is familiar with this ayah? Raise your hand. So how, who can tell me the ayah in Arabic? What's the ayah in Arabic? Just, just that part, am I not your Lord? How does, how does this, what does Allah have to say in the Quran? I hear somebody whisper. Close, close. Are you what? Alastu bi rabbikum. Very good, mashaAllah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alastu bi rabbikum. And this is honestly, this is something we should all have memorized because this is, this is a huge thing that happened before we were even born. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took us all, Adam, Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam was there. Everybody knows Adam, right? Adam was the first, uh, first uh, human being created. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala basically uh, uh, talked to us, you know, in an abbreviated form and asked us, am I not your Lord? This, this very profound question that we all should have memorized, even in Arabic. Alastu bi rabbikum. And then what did everybody say? What does it say in the Quran in Arabic? What did everybody say? Bala. Bala, who said that? Bala, which is not na'am, you know, na'am is kind of kind of weak. Everybody said bala, for sure, yes, you are our, you are our Lord. So, in the topic, they're talking about this, this stance right here, where everybody's standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and He asked us, am I not your Lord? Every single one of us sitting here, He asked us, am I not your Lord? And we all said, not just yes. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to kind of change the, the wording here in this paragraph, even though I've been, I've been jocking it this entire time. Just, it's not just yes. It is yes, for sure, you are our Lord. And from that moment, our natural, pure, internal state has always yearned to be in submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in constant worship of Him. Being on this earth, I'm still reading, is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to see whether we return to Him or we are distracted and led astray by our sworn enemy, the shaytan. He has been working to misguide us since the creation of our parents, Adam and Hawa. Yet there have always been people, and this is I think uh, a kind of a sub subtitle for the talk. There have always been people who succeeded in remaining in submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have always, so despite the shaitan working against us 24-7, despite even sometimes, subhanAllah, it's not even our shaitan, sometimes it's even the shaitan is so good that he's trained our own nafs, our own soul from inside to be bad, even if the shaitan isn't there, like for example in Ramadan. You know, Ramadan comes, we all know in Ramadan, what happens to Shayateen? What happens to Shayateen in Ramadan? They're locked up, they're all chained up. But still, even though the Shayateen are locked up, we still do stupid things. I mean, we still disrespect our parents sometimes, we still say bad words, we still talk to the wrong people, we still backbite about this person or that person. Despite the fact that Shaytan is held up. So, so the key here is that despite all of this, you have almost everything working against you. It's like you're, 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 you're running on a treadmill. If you stand still, what happens? 
and, and this treadmill is not going like five miles an hour. This treadmill is going like 100 miles an hour. So you fly off the treadmill. And you have all these forces working against you. But despite this, so here's, here's, the, here's the kicker right here. And here's the topic. Despite this, despite that you have almost everything going against you and barely anything going for you, even though, yes, our fitrah is to go towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, despite this, there are people, there are people who not only submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but have the utmost submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't do anything without having some sort of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their actions, in their every single, in, in their everyday lives, in their mundane acts. We're not talking about salah and siyam only. We're talking about in everything that they do. And so they're the ones who were guided to the realization that the life on this earth is just temporary, while the real life is in while the real life is in Africa. And this, mashallah, I don't know, Sister Fariha, who wrote this, whether it was you or Brother Sharif. Mashallah, this, 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 this paragraph really does sum it all up. And that was five minutes, so thank you. No, uh, but no, mashallah, it sums it up really, really well. And I'm only going to elaborate a little bit, inshallah, maybe 10, 15 minutes, and then we'll get into a little discussion, inshallah. But uh, while we understand this main point, that there are these people, and there are a certain group of people, they're not everybody. And in fact, Allah Adam, Allah knows best, they might be a minority of mankind by the way right now. And even at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So there are people who remain steadfast despite all of these things that are working with them. And there are people who in their everyday life, with every step they take, doesn't matter if they're going to the gym, if they're going to school, if they're going home, if they're taking up the garbage, if they're on the computer, every single thing that they do, they're remembering Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And now, I mean, I could sit here and tell you guys, okay, everybody remember Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And your actions, just remember Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, don't do anything bad. It's, it's a lot easier said than done. The real question is, how did these people who are at this level, I mean, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala make us from among these people, I say, I mean, how did these people reach the level that they reached? How are they able to fight, to fight their nafs and to fight shaitan and to fight TV and to fight all these ads and to fight everything working against them? and remain in submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not just wishy-washy submission, real submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So initially I came here, I didn't know, it's my first time speaking at Minan, JazakAllah for inviting me, but initially I didn't really know the age groups and whatever. I came here, you know, I saw some young brothers and sisters, mashallah, and I'm like, maybe the topic I prepared is a little bit complex. It's actually, so the people from Flint might have heard, I don't, I don't think I'm that good that you actually remember my Khutbah Jum'ah, but I actually gave this same topic in the Khutbah Jum'ah. And so it's, it's, it's a little bit complex, but then I heard, mashallah, that, what's the brother's name who gave the Fatah after so long? Where is he at? Mashallah, dude, that was, mashallah, Allah. Everybody, takbir. Allah. That was amazing, mashallah. I mean, I, I'm embarrassed to come up here and give the talk after that Fatah. What's your name? Nabi, mashallah. I mean, that's awesome. You didn't even look at a paper, mashallah, and props, man. Good job, mashallah. And so, so after hearing Nabi, mashallah, I don't think, actually, I think this is a little bit below you guys, so please bear with me, okay? Um, and I want to start off with a couple. In fact, I have two people with glasses. All right, I'm sorry to leave you. Uh, sister's in the position. Okay. Once you two come up here. All right. And Sharif, and your name is? Mutahir. Okay, so, so you guys are both wearing glasses, mashallah. And so the, 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 the idea is that uh, there's two ways of looking at the world. So. When I say there's ways of looking at the world, what I mean is there's two sets of glasses through which you can see the world. Okay, so there's two lenses. I don't know, you guys are probably both look like you're but near sighted, right? Far sighted. Okay. So, whatever. If you guys are far sighted or near sighted, you guys, when you're near sighted, I think you see. You can't see far. You can't see far? Okay. The point is, you guys probably have two different like negatives and two different lenses. Like if you gave him your glasses, if you gave him your glasses, guys, pay attention. If you guys gave him your glasses, if you gave him, if you gave Sharif gave Mutahir, Mutahir his glasses, Mutahir probably going to see through these glasses and vice versa, right? I mean, even if they were both uh, far side and near side, two different negatives, two different things. So I want you guys, you guys are just going to be props. I'm sorry. I know you, you didn't think you were volunteering for this, but. So, so on one end, we got, we got Sharif, if he wants to stand over here on my right side. Everybody's left. We got uh, 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 one way of looking at the world. On the left, we have another way of looking at the world. Mutahir. All right? So Mutahir, Mutahir is going to be, I'm sorry, Mutahir, pick on you. I didn't even got to know you, you're going to hate me after this. But Mutahir is going to be the way that most people see the world. Through a very uh, uh, superficial, materialistic way. <laughs> you are just a super so material, what's wrong with you? So this is this is Mutahir. 
It's not really him, just to try to, you know, it's just an example. Please don't everybody go hate him after this, this talk. Okay? So there's one way, and this is the way, unfortunately, and I'm not talking about non Muslims, I'm talking about Muslims and non Muslims alike, and especially us as youth. You know, I'm, I'm not that much older than you guys. I'm 24, 24 years old. <laughs> after 20, you forget how. I'm just kidding. I don't know why I don't know how old I am. <laughs> so, um, so th this is Mutahid. He's, he's this way of looking at the world. In a very superficial way, in a very military, in a, in the way a lot of people look at the world. That's to say that this is how Mutahid sees the world. Okay, Mutahid, this is, this is you. You see somebody who has, you know, mashallah, a nice car, a nice house, a nice phone, nice shoes. Uh, whatever, dress is nice, you know, a nice laptop, and you say, Alhamdulillah, mashallah. I mean, you're not, it's not even like, you're not a bad person, you're just like, in your head, you're thinking, mashallah, this person's doing well for themselves. You know, they're most likely happy, you know, they're probably well to do, they're probably in a good school, in a good family, Alhamdulillah, you know, mashallah. And, and this is the way a lot of people see the world. And this is the, the basically how most of humanity sees it, including some Muslims, including maybe most Muslims, Allah Alam, may Allah save us. But this is one perspective, with this superficial, materialistic perspective. Is is and, and then on the other hand, you have Sharif, Sharif, inshallah. You have Sharif who sees the world the way Allah Subhanahu wa Taala intended us as Muslims to see the world. We have Sharif. You should be proud of yourself. That's a huge deal. We have Sharif who sees the world. <laughs> we have Sharif who sees the world the way that these people that we talked about initially, these people who are, mashallah, despite all the hardships, managed to submit to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wholeheartedly. These people, the way they see the world is the way Shadi sees the world. The way, actually, I'll, actually, I take it back because I'm not really talking about the, you know, talking about the both your glasses. Remember, it's about the glasses. <laughs> right, so there's two different sets of glasses, two different ways of seeing the world. So with these sets, set of glasses, Shadi is wearing. This is how we see in the world, and it's up to us, brothers and sisters, to make this conscious choice about which pair of glasses you want to put on. And I know, like I said, the first part is really theoretical. There's probably not much you can apply, but just bear with me. We're reaching, we're reaching a point, inshallah. 